How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day. Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sundays, 3 Pacific 6 Eastern, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific 1 Eastern with Jim Valley, who will in fact be co-hosting here today. Mike Semper VV will be back tomorrow, he says. He's feeling better, but still not feeling great. So Jim Valley is going to do the show today. And uh, and Mike will be back tomorrow. If he's anything like me, man, he's probably happy he missed the last couple of days. Well, we got a lot to get into here today because it's Wednesday here on the show. AW Dynamite is tonight. We'll tell you about that. NXT 2.0 was last night. Never been so happy to talk about NXT 2.0. But yes, we'll talk a little bit about Sasha and Naomi. Although really, there's pretty much nothing new from what we talked about yesterday. So if you listen to the show yesterday... No new information. Of course, uh, a bunch of madness on the internet yesterday. I foolishly announced that I was stepping away from the internet, and then, of course, uh, I should have known better. A couple of the usual suspects took the uh, opportunity to lose their minds, but that's going to be handled quickly here today. We'll talk about that, and, of course, uh, all of the rest of the news update on Ricky Steamboat. We talked about that yesterday. He was asked to, uh, to do that final match with Ric Flair, and uh, Ricky Steamboat has turned it down. So we'll tell you why he made that decision. XFL is kicking off, and they got TV deals with The Rock. So you'll be seeing a lot of XFL upcoming. Four Horsemen reunion, StarCast, Raw ratings, and uh, plenty of other news here today. If you'd like to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Lots of different ways to contact the show. And, of course, twitch.tv slash F4W video. You can uh, sign up there, which I'll tell you about that after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. No Mike Sempervivi here today, but Jim Valley is joining us. I don't know why you offered to do this, Jim, especially on a day like myself. today. Tell me about it. Golly. You know, I, 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 I try to speak slowly and clearly, and I do my best, and it just, my best is never good enough. I saw a guy on the board just a second ago said, because uh, I guess there was a, a report, uh, I, I can't remember where it was, but uh, that there were people in, in uh, WWE and elsewhere that were supportive of... Uh, of Sasha and Naomi, and some bloke, who, by the way, is a subscriber to our website, said, and Dave and Brian couldn't find anybody. Even though on this show, on this website, that he pays for, yesterday, I did, in fact, talk about people that said positive things about, but well, it doesn't matter, who cares? I'm not going to waste my time here. Jim, what are your, what's your take on this Sasha and... Naomi situation. Is something going on? I hadn't heard. Yeah, something's going on. But Good you know what? Lord. Nothing new today, Jim. So uh, whatever we Man. talked about yesterday, like there's there's nothing new. There's been no comment from Sasha Naomi. There's been no update from WWE. <laughs> there's been there's been nothing. Just you know, more of the same from yesterday. I just can't wait until this didn't happen. That they all make up. This never happened. There was never a press release, and it was all your fault yet again, Brian. I'm not. I'm not. It was dealing you with stir it. in trouble, you internet geek. No, you know I am an internet he, geek, but you uh, weren't there. You don't know. That's what's going to come next. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny is I I actually talked to a bunch of people in the company, and uh, normally people are like, "Oh, you don't talk to anybody." Well, I did this time, and then they were mad about it. How dare you? How dare you report what the actual wrestlers had to say about this issue here? You you fool. You should just see what's going on. Don't actually ask anybody. You should see what's going on. I should have known. Hey, I'm going to move on from this. Well, wait, we do have one more topic we should no, probably talk about. No, must we? Yeah, we should probably talk about how sad it is that uh, Becky Lynch's career is ruined by losing on Monday. I'm sorry. And probably Asuka's done after the pay-per-view. Well, you know, hey, yeah, Asuka, Asuka is... You know, she won a uh, a number one contenders match, and she is going to the pay-per-view where she is going to lose that match. So I am surprised she didn't walk out. 
Oscar. If she's not going to win that match at the pay-per-view. Like, like she can't be professional and know how to get over by losing? Asuka's never done that before. She's a genius. You can win and get over by losing. And she's the perfect example. Even though she won on Monday, when she eventually loses, she'll still be golden because she knows how. This person says she's not a champion. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, you're right. She's not one half of the prestigious WWE women's tag team champions that have been booked so well since the day those titles were created. Yeah. I'm sorry. By a company I'm in a mood no- today. Can I say one other thing? This actually kind of has to do with Sasha and, and Naomi. But, you know, there was a time back in the day where, you know, the wrestlers, because they were workers, they didn't believe anything. Like, they thought that everything was a work. Like, you would hear the wrestlers, and this sounds, like, completely preposterous, and I'm sure people will deny it, but this is true. You know, the wrestlers, at the, the Super Bowl, they felt, was rigged. Uh, the NFL was rigged. It was all rigged to build to, like, they actually believe this. And the funny thing now is, it's now the fans, and, I, and, and this is not a new thing with fans, but, man, between the, uh, the MJF story and the Sasha and, uh, and Naomi story, and other stories as well, like, everybody believes everything is a work. And it's it's amazing to me, and I think it's part of it is the you know we're we're in a we're in an era in uh, America and around the world where uh, there's a lot of people that are very into these conspiracy theories, and uh, and as a result, it's literally now it's kind of filtered down into into WWE. We're like not just WWE, but all of us like everything is a conspiracy. The MGF thing, it's a work. Uh, Sasha, it, you know, it has to be a work. Like, no, it's not. The the Sasha Banks Naomi situation is 100 percent real. Nothing is a work. It's absolutely 100 percent legit. And as far as like this MJF story, I mean, we got a thread on our board that's like 500 pages, and people wrapping themselves in circles about this. Listen, MJF wants more money. That's it. MJF thinks he's underpaid, and MJF is going to either re-sign with AEW or he's going to go to WWE in 2024 and it is going to depend on I don't want to say 100% because you know I I would say that if WWE offered MJF a million dollars and AEW offered him $800,000 and the money was was similar but WWE was offering offering him slightly more maybe we'll say 10 20% more you know, he is going to weigh, well, where will I likely be utilized better? This is all common sense. It's not a work. It's not some weird thing. If if the money's close and he feels that he will be better utilized in a bigger star in AEW, he'll stay in AEW. If the money is, is far apart and WWE decides, hey, we want this MJF guy. We're going to offer him $3 million, And Tony can't come up with $3 million. Maybe he says one and a half. These are all just random numbers. And and it's literally like you're talking a difference of $1.5 million. He's probably going to go to WWE. But it's not some storyline. It's not some Pillman deal. He's a guy who has, you know, he believes in himself as a top heel and character and everything. And he feels he is worth a certain amount of money. And, uh, and he's not getting paid that money now. And he's not the only one. And uh, there, there are others that I'm sure feel this way, and they will also make a decision when the time comes. They will weigh, uh, can I get over there versus here, and how much money there versus here, and they'll make a decision. I don't understand how this has turned into a potential, you know, oh, it's got to be a work storyline. Oh, because this is what it is. It's just real. And it's the same thing with Sasha and Naomi. It's real. Okay, that's it. Let's talk about did some you, other news. Did you just do it because of the fans? No, it has nothing to do with the fans. In this case. you blame the fans. I'm not blaming the fans. Well, I'm blaming the fans that are like crazy. Right. And believe that everything has to be a work. Maybe I'm going to WWE. Ricky Steamboat will not be wrestling. Jim Crockett Promotions presents Ric Flair's last match. So I talked about this yesterday. He had been asked... And uh, he had been doing a little bit of training, and he was going to decide whether he felt that he wanted to do this or not. But he was the guy that they wanted. And uh, he has since uh, turned it down. 
And he has stated, I was approached. I've given it some really serious thought. A lot of respect for the guy in the ring. Both of us are night and day when it comes to stuff out of the ring. Well, that's true. I thought about it for a week and just recently declined on it. I know when I wrestled Jericho at Mania 25, and then we had a return match at Backlash in the singles. It's 69, and I know it's a six-man tag, and I can get a little of this and that in, but with all due respect to our fans, I want them to remember me that last time I was in there with Jericho when they chanted, You still got it. I don't want to scar that phrase. It would be a great payday, sure, but I don't want them thinking, quote, Maybe he should have stayed retired. So it is not going to be Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, which means there's an open slot in that match. July 31st, Nashville Fairgrounds. Ric Flair's last match. StarCast 5. So we'll see who ends up being. If it ends up, we don't even know if it's going to be a six man, although that's certainly the rumor. And I think it would be better off for everybody involved, including Ric Flair, if it were a six man, as opposed to Ric Flair trying a one on one match, even with Jay Lethal. Yeah, I mean, I think that it'll give Ric Flair a chance to catch his breath, do his spots, get out, keep everybody safe. Of course, FTR is going to be extremely safe, so I think it's best for everybody if they bring in one more person. We've also got uh, Four Horsemen reunion at StarCast 5. Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, Barry Windham, Lex Luger, and J.J. Dillon. We'll all be doing a stage show on July 30th. Reunion is being advertised as the first and last time this group of horsemen will ever be on a stage together. I'm not sure what's with all this advertising of the last ever on a pro wrestling event, but that's what they're doing. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Jim Valley joining us. No competition from the NBA or NHL playoffs. Raw Monday. 1.74 1.74 million viewers, so that is where they are now. That's their number. 0.45 and 18 to 49. Best since the playoffs started. Not good, however, based on the standards of the year. Increase from last week, 5% in viewers. 2% in 18 to 49, even in 18 to 34. So if you're wondering how the show would do with no strong competition, well, this is it. 1.75 million first hour, 1.82 million second hour, million in the third hour. And uh, third hour is built around Becky Lynch versus Asuka. Cody Rhodes' interview had strong appeal with teenage girls and adult women. So uh, we're going to be seeing more of that Cody clock. Well, of course. Coming up here in a few He's very charming. So did the, the controversy didn't drive any ratings whatsoever. Well, I mean, it was it was way too early. I mean, it, literally, this happened during the show. Right. So the only the only addition would be people that were like, and, and the, you know, the funny thing is, I mean, is uh, everybody I, watches the TV with their phone on. Everybody's well, got two screens. The funny thing is, I I have uh, I have a couple of friends actually that uh, <laughs> that they work there. And they didn't know what happened as of probably around the time that Cody came out because uh, I asked them what was going on. And they were like, going on with what? And uh, later they found out. So, you know, someone working there didn't know at, you know, 10 o'clock. I don't think that the vast majority of fans really had a strong idea what was going on. We do have a competition for AEW tonight. This is the card for Wild Card Wednesday. Chris Jericho and William Regal will be having a confrontation. William Regal, by the way, did an interview insisting he would never, ever wrestle again. So even though he punched out Chris Jericho, we're not going to be having a match or him as a participant in Blood and Guts or anything like that. But I think he can punch people here and there. Samoa Joe versus The Joker in an Owen Hart tournament quarterfinal. Britt Baker versus Another Joker. Owen Hart tournament quarterfinal. Kyle O'Reilly, Ray Phoenix in the tournament. Hagman Page versus Takeshita with CM Punk on commentary. Wardlow will take his 10 lashes from MJF. Adam Cole versus Jeff Hardy in the first Owen Hart tournament semifinal. Who, Jim Valley, do you believe the Jokers will be? You know, to be honest, I've tried to avoid all of the Joker spoilers because... I don't know, sometimes with these announcements, we get so many of them on AEW. It seems like every week there's a surprise or an announcement. I feel like 
they lose their impact. But if I know ahead of time, it has even less and I can't gauge. Was this effective? Was it not? So I've purposely tried to stay out of the Joker stuff. Well, I I think that we're going to have uh, mm. Miro as yeah. the men's Joker. I suppose it's possible it could be Cesaro, but I have a feeling it's going to be Miro. And then uh, Britt Baker, I would bet it is the former Ember Moon, Athena, as her it could opponent. Be her, yeah. That's my guess. But it could be anybody. I don't know who it's going to be. Well, it won't be Sasha. No. It won't be Naomi. What's the over-under on MJF shouting out Sasha tonight or referencing her? I actually don't think that's going to happen. No? I don't think that's going to happen. Interesting. Very, it's a very very telling comment there, Brian. Why is that? The tone of your voice. The way you said that. I wasn't meaning anything by it, except there's zero chance he mentioned Sasha Banks tonight during an, a, a segment with says, Wardlow Lashley. What, what if he says Mercedes? No, he will not say any of that. No, he will not say any of that. Seems on seems on brand to me. Well, it would be on brand if it were just a random interview, but th- this is a go home angle for the pay per view. So there's, I, I don't feel there's any reason to bring any of that into any of this. On the uh, plus, they're still. I mean, they're not at this point. They're not leaving. They're they're still there. If, if she left, if she got fired or something like that, uh, maybe that would be one thing. But I mean, I'm sure. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I've heard nothing. I don't know if they're going to be back. Uh, one would think it's wrestling. Of course, it'll eventually be back. But, I mean, Vince was furious on Monday night. So, and uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his former wife, Danny Garcia, found a television home for the relaunch of the XFL. Broadcast rights with ESPN and Disney. XFL games will be airing on ABC, ESPN, and FX. Deal begins with the XFL's return season 2023, runs through 2027. So uh, each season, all 43 games, 40 regular season games, two playoffs, one championship, will be featured on a combination of ABC, ESPN, and FX networks. Additionally, the agreement includes exclusive content rights across the Walt Disney Company and ESPN's digital, social, direct consumer outlets such as ESPN+. XFL is excited to officially announce... It's 2023 season will kick off on Saturday, February 18th. So I was thinking about this. Obviously, WWE wants Roman Reigns against The Rock at WrestleMania. And I have been very, very skeptical that this is going to happen. But, but, with this season kicking off in 2023, right after the NFL season, I mean, I think... Or is a businessman, Rock is going to want to be available to uh, devote 100% of his attention. I shouldn't say 100% because of about what I'm about to say, but I don't think he's going to want to be busy filming a movie as the first ever season of The Rock's XFL kicks off. I think he's going to want to be available and not busy doing a movie during that time. So I guess if there ever was a year where he potentially could do a WrestleMania without any movie commitments, you know, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he has decided I'm doing no movies for the first half of 2023 because I'm going to devote my time to kicking off the XFL. And, uh, you know, I could also do WrestleMania because I will have no movie commitments. So I I still am not 100% that he's going to do this match because uh, one of the keys here as I've mentioned a thousand times, is yes, I realize he had a 10-second match with the Vintner, but his last two, and I guess he had a CM Punk thing as well, but the last two WrestleMania matches he had a decade ago, he was injured seriously in both of those WrestleMania matches. So in order for him to uh, have a WrestleMania match a decade later and and 10 years older, I mean, the guy's going to have to train, which means he could always get injured in training, I mean, there's a lot of things that could happen. So at his age, 10 years removed from his last big WrestleMania match, I still have this feeling this match isn't going to happen. But I think that obviously WWE wants it. And based on this uh, uh, XFL kickoff, I think that he's going to have the time to train and do the match if he wants to. But I guess we'll see. Well, he's also got Dwayne Johnson, Seven Buck Enterprises. There are a lot of people 
who rely on him. He's the money-making engine. So he has to consider that too. The risks of going into a match and maybe affecting any of his other businesses and interests. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration other than just time, which is a, a great point, and whether or not he wants to. It's, you know, do I, what are my other responsibilities and what happens if I'm unable to fulfill those? This person, is say, this person says, you're assuming The Rock is going to be a lot more hands-on. No, I'm not assuming that at all. He's not going to be hands-on with the XFL. What I'm saying is, it is the kickoff, so to speak, of the very first season, and this guy is going to want to be everywhere promoting it. He's going to want to do all sorts of media. He's going to want to do. He's not going to be running the operation, but he is going to be the person that everybody's going to want to talk to to promote the XFL. And if you're on a movie set all day long, it's very difficult to do that. But no, obviously he's not going to be hands on with the day to day operations of the XFL. But he is obviously by far the the highest profile individual involved with the XFL and if he's going to try to promote this thing like crazy it's going to be him not a player not some random player going around and in doing media so i think that uh, as a business person he should be available for that and not be busy doing movies and rely on whatever for his ex- dude the XFL's tried to launch multiple times okay it's it's never worked yet so the best chance they have is for The Rock to be front and center, the face of the XFL, and out there helping promote the absolute hell out of this everywhere for season one. And if season one goes well, then maybe you don't have to do it so much the next year. But he needs to do that. Absolutely 100%. The only thing is, has there ever been a show other than Ultimate Fighter that wrestling fans have migrated to? Has there ever been what? Has there ever been a show? Like, every time on Raw you'd advertise La Femme Nikita or whatever. Sure. They always try to get wrestling fans to watch another show, another entity. Has it ever worked other than for The Ultimate Fighter? Well, I mean, it depends. If WWE has a show immediately following Raw that they promote hard, yeah, those fans do stick around. For but, WWE shows. Well, no. I mean, you know, those old La Femme Nikitas, they actually used I to just, do very well after Raw. It was just the first thing that popped into my head. Sure. But it just feels like there have been a million times where they try to... Silk stockings? Get fans to watch stuff, and we ever just pretty much watch wrestling. Well, yes. But, but I mean, the, here's, if you put Miz and Mrs. after Raw... The Raw audience will stick around in some number to watch it. God, if Miz and Mrs. Is, is on Wednesday, uh, much few, far fewer of them will, will, will tune into it than they would if it were right after Raw. But they will tune in if it's immediately afterwards. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Jim Valley is joining us here today. And Jim Valley, you tell me that you watched a couple of minutes of NXT 2.0 and you turned it off? As I'm watching it, I was like, why couldn't the Joe Gacy character walk out of WWE? Not the person, just that character. It feels like every three months we've got a new messiah, evil, whether it's The Fiend or Seth Rollins, and now it's Joe Gacy. It's like, can we give this character a rest for a while? Dude. The guy's trying the best he can with what he's got. I all respect to the person. I'm talking about the character. I'm just, these guys need to go away for a little while. You know, I used to always talk about uh, The Rock because uh, The Rock was awesome. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but even before he was a movie star, like he was a great pro wrestler, very charismatic, gigantic, massive star, and he was so good that uh, you could beat him right and left and he'd still be over. And so for 25 years, that has been their booking philosophy. Well, we can beat anybody, they'll still get over. Unfortunately, exactly zero of them have been The Rock. So instead, we've just got this massive sea of mid-carders, and literally nobody's over except the guys they never actually beat. So anyway, well, now we got a new one. So they had this character called The Undertaker. And they found this uh, Mark Calloway to play him. And he was awesome at it. 
And it ended up being the greatest gimmick in the history of, of wrestling, really. As far as like gimmick characters go, n- there's never been one better than The Undertaker. And, uh, and so what have they done? Well, for 30 years or more, they have been trying to come up with their next Undertaker-style character. Remember they used to try to have fake Undertakers? They were absolutely, uh, like, absolutely atrocious. And they had fake Canes, which were absolutely atrocious. Kane did a good job. But uh, literally nobody has been able to do what The Undertaker's done ever in WWE history. And we, we had, you know, The Fiend. And I, I've seen so many people defending The Fiend, like, oh, my God, he was such a great merch seller and he was a huge star. No, he wasn't. Like, yeah, he sold some stuff. But if he was the star and the merch seller that, ever, that these people claim, he wouldn't have been fired. It's just it's simple business. So he got fired. Then they gave the gimmick to Alexa Bliss. And, like, you know, she sold some dolls or whatever, but it was the exact same thing. Eventually, she just got taken off TV, and she vanished off the face of the earth. She was very frustrated about it because it wasn't working except to a small subset of fans. And now we've got Joe Gacy. Now, same thing. Let's try it with Joe Gacy. And it hasn't worked. Nobody cares. It's not helping Braun Breaker. It's like they keep going back to this character that has been proven to be a failure over and over and over again, unless you're The Undertaker. And when the Joe Gacy one's done, we're going to find another spooky guy to put druids with. And it's not going to work. That's exactly right. And I feel bad for the guy because this is his shot. And there he's I'm sure he's doing everything that they want to the best of his ability. And he's he's trying. You can tell he's he's. He's giving it 110%, but just what they've given him is just not working. So we had uh, NXT 2.0. Cameron Grimes, Solo Sokoa beat Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. This was a good match because actually we had four good wrestlers in it. And uh, what was interesting about it is uh, Solo Sokoa ended up pinning Carmelo Hayes. And, of course, Carmelo Hayes is facing Cameron Grimes for the title at their next show. And Solo Sago is not even in the match. So, uh, okay, that was their finish. The show is not perfect. Pretty deadly kind of promo on the Creed Brothers. We had a video package for uh, Thea Hale. And she's a new signee to WWE. And uh, she's doing her promo. and She's doing a promo. And then she drops a line about how, I'm only 18. I haven't even graduated high school yet. And the audience just goes absolutely nuts. So uh, anyway, she'll uh, she'll be training while in college for her future WWE career. We had Lash Legend versus Tatum Paxley. Not good. Lash Legend won. Lash Legend moves on in the tournament. So, yes, as I have mentioned for weeks now, Lash Legend, she keeps advancing. And then, uh, you know, the Lions Roar, Nikita, whatever her name is, she is also advanced. So it's the feud that is never going to end. They're going to do a best of seven without actually doing a best of seven. Lash Legend, Nikita Lions. As I watch Lash Legend... You know, obviously she's but you know playing. she's great at basketball, Jim? I, I'd heard that yeah. somewhere. I'm not sure, but you know, she is a great athlete. There's no question. But is this going to be good for her career to have all this exposure and all this experience? Or is this going to kill her in the eyes of the fans? Or will people just forget? I go back and forth. I can't decide if being exposed like this is good for her or not. Well, uh, whether it's good for her or not, it's going to be the same for everyone else in this company because it's all NIL deals very shortly down the road. Everybody is going to be on television when they've had like 10 matches. That's just... But luckily, they did then announce NXT is going on the road, so all of these wrestlers are at least, at least going to get more dates. So uh, Tampa, Largo, Jacksonville, Venice, all... It's the, it's the coconut loop, as they called it. Duke Hudson, interview with Mackenzie Mitchell. Braun Breaker comes up, and it uh, looks like they're going to be having a match at some point. We had the Joe Gacy segment. It sucked. He wants another match with Braun Breaker. Braun pinned him clean in the middle of the ring. Yeah. 
So uh, Joe Gacy kidnapped him and left him, and I quote, in the wilderness. Now, uh, of course, Braun's mad about that. So Joe Gacy somehow has the power to not only book a title rematch at the upcoming pay-per-view, which, by the way, is not a TV special. It's on Peacock. It is Joe Gacy versus Braun Breaker. If Braun loses via DQ, he loses the title. Color me excited for that one. Can't wait. Indy Hartwell actually did a good promo challenging Mandy Rose to a match. Probably the best promo she's ever cut in uh, NXT, which is not you know high praise, but it was good. So uh, Wesley is supposed to face Zion Quinn, but Zion Quinn, for the second time in four weeks, cannot get medically cleared. So uh, up walks Nathan Frazier. He's being all polite. And uh, eventually they agreed to do a match later on. I think they're going to be the new MSK is, is the way it seems to be uh, building here. Viking Raiders versus the Creed Brothers actually turned into a real good match. And uh, Roderick Strong tried to interfere. And Julius and uh, his brother were all upset about it and ends up with Julius getting pinned. And afterwards, uh, the continued breakup of the Diamond Mine, or at least the splitting off of the Creed Brothers, looks to be uh, coming here. A uh, bunch of interview segments. Grayson Waller versus Andre Chase. Fans were super to this match because, man, they love Chase U. Andre Chase uh, loses when uh, he tosses Grayson over the top rope. Grayson lands on old Bodie Hayward. Andre Chase is all worried about it. Bodie tells him to get in the ring. He gets in the ring. He's immediately pinned with the uh, cutter. So, uh, sad day for Chase University. Toxic Attraction interview. Mandy Rose accepts the match with Indy Hartwell. Roxanne Perez, Kiana James. The former Roxy is great. She's the, the I think, probably, maybe, because we haven't seen a lot of Io Shirai lately. So of the active women that are wrestling on this show right now, she's by far the best. And Kiana James is very green, but Roxanne got a pretty decent match out of her and pinned her, and so she is moving on in the tournament. We had Nathan Frazier and Wes Lee. Of course, the former Ben Carter against Wes Lee. How can you have a bad match? They had a very, very good match. And then Vaughn Wagner just ran in and beat up both guys for the no contest. Because he's big. So then uh, Lee, Wes Lee, and, uh, and Nathan Frazier are wandering around backstage. And uh, they wander by Sangha, who I guess is now a babyface, but I, I'm actually not sure. So Sangha, he's sitting there. I like this Sangha guy. And he goes, man, I watched your match. It was a great match. And then he said something about guys your size or something like that. And Wesley is, is, is insulted. And uh, he's like, what do you mean guys our size? <laughs> and Nathan Frazier's like, dude, he's not insulting you. Like when you're as big as he is, everyone is our size. But Wesley is still all angry about it. So Ben Carter's like, dude, I ain't fighting this fight. I'm out of here. And he leaves. So Wesley gets in Sangha's face, challenges him to a match. And so, yes, next week on this show, it appears that Sangha, Sangha is going to face Wesley. And Wesley's supposed to be a baby face, but I'm watching this segment. It's a classic WWE. It's like, Sangha came off as like, like, why are you so mad at this big guy? He's not being mean. He's, he was actually being pretty polite. And Wesley is supposed to be a babyface. He's all angry and pissed off about it and challenged him to a fight. So it's like, am I supposed to cheer? What? Like, what's going on here? But they're going to have a match. Then the main event was Santos Escobar and Tony D'Angelo. And I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen it yet. So I apologize, everybody. I apologize. I was watching the show last night. I was so tired. It was like 1.30 in the morning. I hadn't slept at all the night before because it's an Observer Radio night. And I got to the main event, and I did the thing I've done a million times. I said, you know what? I'm going to go to bed. There's only 10 minutes left of the show. I'll wake up, and I'll watch it before Observer Live. And I forgot! So anyway, I'll watch that before Observer Radio tonight. But I do know Santos Escobar won uh, after... Let's, let's read this report from our own front page. D'Angelo is distracted by a brawl at ringside. Phantom foreign object spot like Jerry Lawler in Memphis. Escobar digs in his tights. 
He appears to load up his hand with something. He decks D'Angelo with a closed fist, and then he uh, he pinned him. The announcers didn't see the loaded object when it happened. So I guess we had the phantom loaded object finish, and uh, he gets pinned. And then we have a uh, Joe Gacy promo to end the show. Thank God I missed that one. But that, everybody, is NXT 2.0. It's all right this week. It's all right, Jim. You know, I watch the show, and I think about these guys and women are supposed to be the future of WWE. And everybody has a costume. Everybody's got one defining characteristic. Yes. And that's it. Yeah. It feels very much like a, a modern-day version of 93 Raw. Bro, it, I don't even think it's 93 Raw. It's 1992 WWF Superstars of Wrestling. I just... I, I understand that the way people consume things, it's very quick. So maybe the idea is that you need very defining, immediate characteristics. So I can look at the TV or look at my device and go, oh yeah, there's the Italian guy. There's the mob guy. There's the uh, Latino family leader. There's the mean girls, whomever. So I guess, is that the idea? I well, just... it's not even, Jim, it's not even an idea. Like, I was watching the WWF superstars on the network, okay? I watched it like a year and a half ago or whatever. Then NXT 2.0 started. I started watching it. It was like, this is the exact same show. And you want to know why? Well, Superstars of Wrestling 1992, Vince McMahon, Bruce Prichard, Kevin Dunn. 1992! I didn't even graduated high school. Well, now it's 2022. Vince McMahon, Bruce Prichard, Kevin Dunn. Well, why would it be anything different? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Alive. Mike Sabravivi, also of wrestling. Actually, no, Mike Sabravivi is not here. It's Jim Valley. But I have an update on Lance Storm, also suffering from COVID. And Lance feels much better today, he says. He's sitting outside in the sun. Although he can't move around much or he starts having a hacking fit. So, uh, But he had a big improvement today, so best wishes to Lance. And uh, Mike has had a big improvement as well. He should be back on the show tomorrow. And uh, we'll see what he has to say about all of this. So there you go. Excited for, for AEW tonight, Jim? Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I mean, we're gearing up to the pay-per-view. I think double or nothing is going to be stacked. And um, I think there's going to be some excitement. Yeah, we've also got, I uh, should mention, nah, I'm not going to mention that. Uh, We're not going to mention it. It's going gonna, gonna to stiff us like that? Yeah, actually. Short tag us? Yeah, last couple of days, I, I get to this final segment of the show, and I just want to I want to lay my microphone down on the desk and just walk out. Sorry I did that to you. Not you. Actually, I did that yesterday. It was ironic, quite frankly. I was talking about the Sasha thing, and then uh, there you go. All right, what do we got? Let's do a couple of text messages here. Brian, are you saying The Rock is going to play in the NXFL and then become a carpenter? Nope, I'm not saying that. If MJF does make some kind of a comment about how Wardlow can give him his belt or he can go back into Tony Khan's office, put it on his desk and go home, kind of thing fits for those who know and those who don't. Well, we'll see what happens. I would, I would, uh, I'll bet you five bucks, Jim. No I mention think, of Sasha I'm Banks on the show tonight. I think you've got inside information. I don't. I'm not taking that back. I don't know what they're going to do. They never tell me before. Yeah, I only uh, hear about it after. Uh, Five bucks, Jim. Come on. Not taking it. Don't trust uh, you. you cheap. You cheap. Anyway. Don't trust you. I want to thank you all for listening here today. Most of you as usual. Top tiers. Twitch.tv slash F4W video. Back tonight with Dave. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>